This is Peter. He has a brilliant business idea. Even though he doesn't look the part, he has a vast knowledge of economics, which he successfully applied in his detailed business plan in order to ask for financing. This is Paul. He also has a brilliant business idea. He looks smart and has a talent for convincing presentations, needless to say issues, formal planning. He also applies for financing. But how can we compare these two seemingly different characters with different knowledge bases? It's a bit like trying to compare apples and oranges. The solution. First of all, we even the odds in appearance and then knowledge by giving Paul a coaching in economics and Peter a presentation training. Well, basically what we've seen is that over the years, the literature and business planning has become quite, let's say, oppositional. So there are people saying that business plan is a good thing or business plan is a bad thing. Um, and there's no gray area in between. Um, one thing that we have noticed, though, is that most of the research treats business planning as an exogenous variable, which makes your life easier empirically, but it's not really what practice basically looks like. We know that in a lot of business schools, uh, business planning is something that is taught as a capstone course. Um, we know that a lot of people write business plans because they want to acquire financing. So the question for us is, can we disentangle what prompts the business planning in the first place? And conditional on that, what is the performance impact on a business plan? Um, as an analogy, for example, when you think about you know, Bill Hewlett and Dave Packard founding um, HP, um, they had a garage in which they were founding their business. Um, now, just because they were successful, we wouldn't necessarily recommend to people that you should have a garage to be a successful entrepreneur. Well, the main problem we had was to compare, if you will, apples and oranges, planners and non-planners in our sample. Um, there were people who had high levels of education, low levels of education, people that were actively looking for financing and not looking for financing. Um, so the issue we faced was how to compare these people. And um, what we did in the paper was to rely on uh, propensity score matching, um, which relies on a seminal paper in econometrics, where instead of looking at all the characteristics um, at the same time, you can just conditional on the propensity score, which is the predicted probability of writing a business plan and then create statistical twins um, thereafter. The only problem we faced is that if you have an omitted variable bias, unobserved heterogeneity, um, your results may become um, non-robust. So the reviews had us ju uh, jump through a lot of different hoops to ensure that the results are in fact robust. And you can see in the paper um, that we've gone long ways to ensure that the results that we have um, are robust in a sense that they get rid of endogeneity, but we don't have a problem with omitted variable bias that may be causing the results in the first place. Well, first of all, we find that business planners are about 15% more likely to create a successful venture, which is sizable when you look at it. Um, we also find that the results are fairly robust to a lot of different um, measures that we employed. When, when you look at it from an academic point of view, there are a couple of approaches that receive a lot of attention right now, as the Lean Startup approach or the Business Model Canvas, where there's currently no empirical evidence of whether they actually work, though they are applied a lot. Um, and I think our results also show that or pave the way how people can use um, our methodology to provide some evidence regarding um, the benefits or maybe the problems that are associated um, with these type of approaches.